Fighting the insanity of our secular culture and its stronghold on the Church of Nice can be exhausting. That's why, from February 8th through the 15th, we're hosting our third annual Retreat at Sea. Join Michael Voris and nearly 200 faithful Catholics who have already signed up and spiritually recharge while learning about the faith. I'll be more motivated to um, share the truth to other people when I go back home. I'm charged. I'm pumped. So click the link, register today, and help us prepare an authentic Catholic uprising. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris, coming to you from Rome in front of the statue of St. Catherine of Siena. There are loads and loads of reports circulating everywhere and speculations that various bishops are losing the faith, that the Pope is a bad Pope, that many of the most powerful and influential leaders of the church want to change everything they can get their hands on, that good bishops are being dumped and bad bishops are on the ascendancy. It's impossible to pick up a paper, read a blog, or listen to an interview coming out of Rome these days without these things being spoken of openly by just about everyone, secular media as well as Catholic media. Last week's issuing of the infamous working document saying the homosexual orientation should be valued was like throwing gasoline on a bonfire. So let's just say for discussion that the Pope is a bad Pope and is very opposed to the traditions of the church. Let's just say that there is a cabal of wicked and evil bishops and cardinals in cahoots with him to overthrow the church. Let's just say that there are many other cardinals and bishops who through a willful ignorance and cowardice and naivete are going along with this because they actually believe it is better to accommodate the world than to fight the evil in it. And let's just say that most dioceses in the world have succumbed to one degree or another to the evil and most of them are unfaithful in varying degrees. Let's just say that most Catholics no longer believe the Catholic faith which must be believed totally. And let's just say that most leaders in the church, including the Pope, are no longer Catholic in any meaningful manner and want wholesale changes that touch on the very heart of the faith. Even if all of that, every bit of it were true, what should be the proper response of a faithful Catholic to such a nightmare scenario? First, he must ask himself, does any of this mean that our blessed Lord has failed in his promise that the gates of hell will not prevail? No, it doesn't. It means that the church is actually much smaller than most people realized that Pope Benedict had said that and more than hinted at it. He must also ask himself, a faithful Catholic, is this situation, horrible as it would be, that our Lord had no foreknowledge of it, one that caught even the Holy Trinity off guard and by surprise, therefore even God is scrambling around in heaven looking for an answer? Does it mean a faithful Catholic must ponder that we need to leave the church and look for some other community that claims to be more faithful, one that holds the faith, while still not being in full communion with the Holy Father in Rome. Rather, shouldn't a faithful Catholic ask himself if the church has undergone any severe deep crisis before in her 2,000 year history where the overwhelming majority of bishops had lost the faith? Shouldn't a faithful Catholic also look over that same expansive history and also consider if there have been periods in the history of the church where there had been bad popes, immoral popes, unfaithful popes? At any time when the most of the clergy was corrupt? Is that a reasonable question? A faithful Catholic's only response to any nightmare scenario, imagined or real, is to remain faithful. That's what the word means, full of faith. We were sealed in this at our confirmations. We were endowed by the Holy Spirit with the gifts to remain so. Let's just say that this is a time which tries Catholics' souls. So what? What is needed is an even deeper faithful response, an even more aggressive living out of the faith of our fathers. No one of us was ever promised a rose garden in this life. In fact, what we were promised and guaranteed was the cross. Let's just say that the cross of this generation is to bear up so strongly against various members of a hierarchy who have betrayed our Lord for the glories of the world. What a tremendous cross this would be. What horrible suffering and sadness for the Catholic who loves our Lord and his holy bride. Let's just say all of this were true, that these times in the life of the church have no compare, that they have no equal in our long sacred history. 
Well, was this not the same situation that the Catholics of the fourth century faced when traitors, priests, and bishops declared that Jesus Christ was not divine, was not the Son of God, was not equal or consubstantial with the Father? What did those faithful Catholics do then? They had no 2,000 years of history to look back on. They were fresh from nearly three centuries of being fed to lions. They and the few faithful bishops clung to the faith, soldiered on in the midst of a ferocious battle to stand fast to the truth. They did not run off and form another Catholic community, feeling that it was more Catholic than the one the Son of God himself had established. Nor did they succumb to the evils of the day and make excuses to compromise with it. They did not swing to one side or the other. They stayed on the narrow path, and eventually our blessed Lord won the day for them. And be very clear on this, they did not prevail. Our blessed Lord prevailed through them. As few as they were in number, they stayed faithful to the teachings, all of them. They clung even more tenaciously to the faith. They instructed everyone in their personal orbits, the people they knew, their friends and families, to grow in deep love of Jesus and his authentic church. There is no other response than to cling more to Christ and offer yourself in body and spirit as a living sacrifice to our blessed Lord so that he may make the crooked way straight. Let's just say all this horrible stuff is true. Then the only response is to remain in full and complete communion with the church and the Holy Father, bearing up under whatever pains that may bring about and become as holy as you possibly can so that you may be used to bring about the salvation of souls. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello everyone, Michael Voris here from churchmilitant.tv. Bishop Daniel Jenke of Peoria, Illinois has said, quote, we can no longer be Catholics by accident, but must be Catholics by conviction. Amen to him. The bishop is dead on. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about on Saturday, November 8th in Toronto, Canada. The event is called The Future of Catholicism and it's being hosted by the terrific apostolate Catholic Chapter House. I'll be joined by Tim Haynes, host of the hardest hitting Catholic podcast on the internet. We'll both be giving two talks each about the crisis in the church as well as the new evangelization. So come and enjoy the fellowship of hundreds of like-minded Catholics at this all-day event, which includes the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and the Rosary. You'll also have the opportunity to engage with many outstanding Catholic organizations who will be present there as well. You can learn more or register today at catholicchapterhouse.com. You can see it right there on the screen. So we will see you in Toronto at the beginning of November. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.